So what is model context protocol and why is everyone so hyped about it and how we're actually using it for our existing clients and boosting their voice AI infrastructure and how you can too. Anthropic released this article last year in November outlining model context protocol and what it actually does. So model context protocol is a new system for AI agents to seamlessly interact with business software as easy as possible. And for me to demonstrate this to you, I built a little figma of the previous existing N8N typical AI agent workflow that you would have for a booking assistant. And you would have an input, which could be, hey, I wanna make a booking for 3 p.m. tomorrow the AI agent would have a bunch of different tools attached to it. So we could have a booking availability, reschedule, cancel, actual booking, and maybe some other API calls or HTTP requests that you want to make. It's a lot of different tools and your prompting for these AI agents have to be very specific and very tailored in order for it to work. The problem with this is that one, you just keep adding more and more tools. And most of these tools aren't actually built into N8N. So you have to make like HTTP requests. There's not much customization with these tools. It's not great. And it's very hard to actually configure it to your liking. And obviously you have to prompt way harder. Whereas with MCP, we have the same instructions. So, hey, I want to make a booking for 3 p.m. tomorrow. The AI agent will basically take that information and send it to an MCP server. And I'm going to be breaking down what MCP servers are later in the video and how you can actually install them into your instance. But we're sending this information to a specific MCP server, which in this case would be the server for, let's say, Google Calendar, Cal.com, Calendly, any booking software. And it has two main tools. So these are universal tools for every single MCP server. We have the list tools function and we have an execute tools function. And it's kind of self-explanatory what these list tools is basically going to list out all the available tools that this software has. Like what I showed you in this previous Figma with all the different tools available, like get availability, cancel reschedule etc and then it's going to send it back to the AI agent and the AI agent will have to figure out hey so the user wanted to make a booking these are all the available options that I can make with this software let's use the book a booking tool and actually execute that and some notes that I made about this is that one these nodes are universal for every single MCP server and I'm going to show you how that works in one second but MCP could become a standard for AI and automation by providing a unified way to access business tools and data agentically. And how MCP simplifies integration compared to using API documentation or HTTP requests. And to really show you how this works, I've made another diagram where on the left here, we have your typical NNN workflow, which is that first diagram I showed you, where you just have a bunch of different tools and you have to make sure your AI agent is prompted properly. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And it's just so much stuff. We have all these built in integrations, and then you have to probably make some API calls for other existing integrations that NNN doesn't natively have and that's called the same thing that this is doing list tools execute for that specific server in this case we have this credential set up for the google calendar server in this video i'll show you some existing servers that already exist and how we can integrate those but it's literally the same thing you don't have to do any prompting in this. Well, you have to do a little bit of prompting, but it's nowhere near the degree that you would have to do for this specific set of instructions. And it just makes things so much easier. So Ali, how do we actually do this? Well, in the link in the description, I'll go through it now. There are two GitHubs that I want to go over for actually installing this. The first one is we're going to have to actually install MCP into our N8N instance. And the way we do that is through this node client. So if we go into N8N, and this is the diagram I was showing before, go into N8N and we go into settings. And if we go down to community nodes, you'll have to install a custom community node. And in this case, I already have it installed, but you want to N8N nodes MCP. And the way you get this name is from this official GitHub for the actual MCP integration into N8N. So you want to basically copy this, go into install. You don't need a browse. You can just type this in directly. Click I understand and then install. Make sure there's no bases or anything. You want to install and that will go ahead and install this community package for you. Now, what does that even do? Well, if we go back into N8N, if we go back into testing, I'm going to delete this quickly just so I can show you how this works. So we're just going to do a manual trigger. And then if we type here MCP, you see this little box icon. 
And this is a node from our community. So this is how you can know if you've installed the community community node properly, is if there's this icon next to MCP client or if this even exists, to be honest. So we click on MCP and there's six main actions that we can take. But in this video, I'm just going to be outlining the two key ones, which is execute a tool and list available tools. So we're going to do list available tools. And then when you actually click this client, you're not going to have a credential. I've just set up this credential for this video, but you're going to have to set up your own credential. And there's two ways you can do that. You can do it using a command line, which is what we're going to do in this video. And we can also do it using a service sent event, which we're not going to do. We're going to use command line because it's so much easier. And I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to do this. So if we go back into this GitHub and scroll down, it outlines the installation guide and how you set up your credentials for certain environments or certain servers. But now you're probably wondering, well, Ali, how do I like install certain softwares DP into my NNN? Well, there's a second GitHub, which basically outlines all of the different MCP servers, not just for N8N, this is just for in general. And there's three main types of servers. There's the reference servers, there are the third party servers, and then there are community made servers. Now we're gonna be focusing on reference servers for this video, just because they're the easiest. And one thing I really wanna point out specifically in this video is that at the time of recording, this technology is still so new that people are still adding more and more servers every day. Some of these servers, even the third party servers don't work yet because we just don't have access to it. So in this video, I'm just gonna walk through some of the reference servers and how they work and how you can use those. So let's say we want to use Brave Search. So we can click on Brave Search, for example, and this will walk us through how to set up Brave Search MCP server for our N8N instance. Now, keep in mind, you have to be local hosting your N8N in order for this to work. So you cannot do the official cloud hosting server. We are local hosting it through digital cloud. So that counts as well if you are self hosting through a third party software. But let's actually go through how we can set this up. So we want to use Brave and they actually go through a Brave example here. But inside of wherever you have your self-hosted N8N, you want to open up your console. So this is my console for DigitalOcean. And uh, what we want to do is we want to take this line and I want to explain how this line works instead of just giving you a copy paste. So we're basically installing an NPM package into an N8N instance. And this is a specific model context protocol for the Brave search. So this line pretty much stays the same for almost any MCP server that you want to install, except for this backslash. Now, how this changes? Well, it depends on the server. So for example, with this Brave search server, if we scroll down to the documentation of this Brave Search server, you see the argument is model context protocol server Brave Search. And that's kind of how we figure it out. So we can go back into our console. And you can do npm install dash g and then the argument, which is at model context protocol. And if you wanted to do this for something else, by the way, so it doesn't have to be Brave Search, I'll show you in a second. But we just want to install Brave Search now. I've already installed Brave Search, so this is probably just going to end up working out anyway. And by the way, if you get an error saying npm isn't installed in your N8N instance, you want to use this command, which I'll quickly outline in a second. You want to use this command, which is just sudo apt install node.js npm. And this will go ahead and install npm into your N8N instance so that you can actually make this request. So now that we've installed the MCP server for the Brave software, I want to show you how you can do this for any other software. So we can copy this first line, npm install g. This is pretty much going to be the same for any MCP server you want to install. And then let's say we want to do GitHub, for example. We want to install the GitHub MCP server. Scroll down to their, there's a lot of different things. Scroll down to their documentation. And you, you can kind of see here, for example, look at how many different tools there are for GitHub. There's 26 different tools for GitHub. Imagine having to go into your N8N and creating like individual HTTP requests for all of these. MCP. You don't need to do that. You just need those two functions I showed you at the start. You just need this versus 26 tool GitHub. It's so powerful. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it in this video. But we want to scroll down to the NPX code and we want to basically copy this model context protocol. So same thing as the Brave server, but this time it's server slash GitHub. And that's the only thing that changes. Now I can install it. Sure. I'll probably not use it to be honest, but I want to show you guys how this works. Make sure I do this properly. And this will go ahead and install the GitHub MCP server. 
if we ever want to use that. <laughs> but for this video, we're just going to stick with the Brave search because it's a lot easier. Now that we've installed the Brave CP server to our N8N instance, it's very important that if we scroll down real quick, we want to activate community packages for your AI agents. So if you just do what I just did and go into N8N and try using this, it's not going to work. We first need to actually go into our environment inside of our console. And we need to copy this command, which is n8n community packages allow tool usage equals true. So basically what this does, it's going to allow n8n to use community made tools for our AI agents. And by default, it's set as false just for security reasons in case you install some sketchy tool for your AI agent. But in this case, we want to basically grab true. We want to go into our console and where we have our docker compose.yml file. So the way you would do this if you're doing this in DigitalOcean and want to follow along is you do cd n8n, I think it's docker caddy, which is just a file directory. And then I think we want to do nano dot, sorry, not dot compose yml. And you can go into here and you want to go down into your environments and just add n8n community packages, allow tool usage equals true. Add that make sure you restart your N8N and you'll be able to use these MCP tools for your AI agents. Now that we've covered that, we need to actually set up a credential for our Brave MCP server. So the way you do that is there's a few different commands that you need. Command is always going to be NPX because we even call it, we're using the NPX documentation. The argument is basically the same thing that we had beforehand. So let me actually go back to the Brave search so I can show you what it is. The argument is just dash y so we have dash y and then space at model context protocol server brave search so you would put that in here and then your environment is your api key so the way you would get that is if you go into the brave search api create an account go into api keys and then you want to copy your api key put that into here save it make sure you name it as brave and now you have an mcp server directed to the brave software one thing i forgot to mention as well very important is when you're making these API requests, make sure that in your credentials for your environments, you do the API key equals. So for example, I didn't show this in the Brave. I should have showed this in the Brave. Uh, if we go back to Brave search for your environment, you want to do Brave underscore API underscore key equals and the API key. You don't just want to do the API key. It should be Brave API key equals your API key. And what this actually looks like, I don't want to show you what it is, but it would basically look like this where these numbers are your API key. You don't need the quotations, you just need to put it like this and then it'll work. So that's exactly what we're gonna do for this Google Maps. And how this actually works in theory is, let me show you. So if we go back into GitHub, this Brave software has two specific tools that we can use for it. And I think I can go down into here. Actually, I actually might just go in here. So the Brave MCP server, unlike the GitHub server, which had 26 different tools, this Brave search server has two tools. It has a web search and it has a local search. And we can actually demonstrate this by making a list tool directly. And what's gonna happen, and I've been having some issues with my N8N, it's just been super slow, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna list out all the tools or that we can basically make. So we have the browser web search and we have the Brave local search. This is great. Now, what we can do with this is we can create an AI agent with a typical chat node. And we can also use an AI agent node, give it a model as so, give it some memory as well because this is a chat model. And then we can give it some tools. So we can click MCP client tool and we obviously have it set to our Brave credential and we, we wanna make this a list tool. And then we'll probably just call this one list tool. And then we wanna add an execute tool so we can list the tools which is the web search and the local search but then we actually need to do something with it we need the ai to kind of figure out is this do you want to make a local search or do you want to make a web search and that's what this execute tool does you go here you can click execute tool the tool name we can just use the from ai method basically call it tool and then we want to do use the most tool for example and then the tool parameters, we can actually just let the model define this because this tool lists out all the parameters anyway, which is amazing. So we're basically giving the AI all the API documentation for the Brave software and then letting it decide what tool to execute in order to satisfy our request. It's really damn cool. So we're going to call this one execute, execute tool. Probably want to make this one space. And then we want to give this AI a very simple prompt. It doesn't have to be crazy, but you still do have to prompt it. So 
Basically, it's a skilled experienced AI assistant in helping us with our queries. And what it'll do is it'll analyze the user's query and select the most suitable tool to address the following step-by-step -step process. Carefully review the user query, use the list tools tool. So I wanna make sure that this is correct. Very important when you're building out these systems. Use the list tools tool to identify all the available tools and the descriptions. In this case, the Brave server has two tools, which is just the web search and the local search. Hopefully this is starting to make a lot more sense to you now. And we can even do a GitHub example as well if we really wanted to. But use the list tools, figure out which tool is the best use case for the user query, and then use the execute tool function to basically execute that tool request. So let's do this with a predefined chat node. And what I want to put in this chat node is, so, sorry. So give me some local recommendations for my family to visit on our one week trip to Australia slash Brisbane that is around the city area near local transportation. So what it's going to do is it's basically actually show you. So it's called the list tools function to basically grab the web search and the local search tool with its schema, which is the query, the count, the offset. This is basically what you would put into the HTTP body request. Then it's gone ahead and actually chosen a tool that it wants to use and actually made the request for us. And you can see here, the AI agent has come back to us with a few family friendly attractions for this one week trip. So it's given me a bunch of things. It honestly looks more or less the same. Probably not gonna ever do this near South Bank, so that sounds right. But you can see how powerful this is. Instead of making those individual HTTP requests where we would have to fill in these body parameters, these query parameters ourselves, we just get the AI to do it through the MCP server all for us. And this is so, so powerful. And I wanna show you another example of how this works with a booking agent. We can't actually do a booking agent yet because the reference servers don't actually contain Google Calendar server. And some of these third-party softwares and community-made softwares aren't up to date or we can't actually access yet. But I think you guys understand the theory and how powerful this stuff is and how you can actually implement it into your N8N as fast as possible. That was Brave MCP server. Let's try a second one just so I can really iterate this process inside your guys' heads. And we're gonna go into the GitHub server library. And for this one in particular, I've chosen a third-party server and I wanna choose Firecrawl. We're gonna do Firecrawl for this one just because it's quite simple to set up and it's very similar to Brave. So what we're gonna do is gonna scroll down to the manual installation and we're gonna look for NPM install Firecrawl MCP. We're gonna to go to our digital cloud console. So we're gonna just copy paste that into our command line and then that will start installing the MCP server into our N8N instance. Then what we can do is we can scroll down here and have a look at, this is if you're running it on Windsurf, but in this case, what do we wanna do? I guess this will work as well, to be honest. So what we can do is we can go back into N8N. I'm gonna delete this real quick. We're gonna do the trigger manual node. We are going to do the MCP client. And one really good way to test and make sure your MCP servers work properly is to just do what I'm doing with the manual trigger node, list available tools. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new credential for what is it called, firecrawl. Command is NPX, always gonna be NPX. The arguments, well in this case we have this dash Y argument, space, and you can kind of see the pattern here, firecrawl MCP, and then your environment is just your API key for firecrawl. So what you would do is you would grab firewall API key, just like this, firewall API key equals, and then your API key. So I have gone ahead and connected my Firecrawl API. And basically what this does is a web search agent that is going to search through a given URL and summarize all that key content. And let's actually execute it. So what I've got here is, can you give me a summary of the following website? And we'll just put our company website. So we'll go Neuro of AI, just grab this one right there. And we'll just chuck that in there. And this makes everything so much easier. So what's gonna happen is once this list tool node executes, you can see all these different tools that we could have had to make with HTTP requests, looking at the API documentation, but with MCP servers, it literally does all of that for us. 
So the AI is going to look through all of these tools and determine the best possible tool based on our query. And then it's going to execute that tool. And you can see here from the output is all the HTML code from the website. And the best part about AI is it's going to scrape through all of that and give us a summary of the website. So Neurov AI offers advanced AI solutions focused on lead generation, proven AI solutions, lead generation services, predictable project execution, enterprise consulting custom packages. Like this makes everything so much easier. And if you're able to leverage this knowledge and leverage everything that I've taught you in this video, you'll be able to make such agentic workflows like this, where you're not going to have like 20 different tools that you have to fine tune your LLM to basically cater to. And it just makes everything so much easier. But Anyways, that is pretty much going to be the end of the video. Like I said, link in the description if you want to get in touch with me and my team and actually implement these MCP servers to your own workflows. Or if you're looking to get into any voice AI projects, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.